The legacy of the lightsaber in video games is quite mixed for what is by all intents and purposes the most iconic weapon in history. It's the perfect blend of sci-fi and fantasy, with the light symbolising the gleam of the swords from warriors of old. And as with everything in those three films, lightsabers were hugely influential to the generations of artists who were raised on the space epics. So how did those who would grow up to be video game developers incorporate the iconic blade into interactive art? Mostly by missing the entire point of them and just making them hit things with shiny laser swords. But to be fair, Lucas's original vision for the sabers were a bit overly artistic. See, Star Wars itself had many influences, and the Jedi are inspired by samurai from Akira Kurosawa films. This is why the lightsaber battles of the original trilogy are so restrained and deliberate. Seriously, take a look at this footage of Vader vs Luke. In your mind, you see it as this hyper-fast visual effects heavy battle, but they're mainly just poking at each other with sticks, and the reason this fight is so legendary is because of the context surrounding it. Lucas saw the sabers just like the katanas, and he choreographed his fight scenes around the Kurosawa films he was in love with. And then money happened and we got Yoda jumping around like he's on crack, but oh well. It seems that video games also followed George's more corrupted vision, and started throwing in lightsabers for coolness's sake alone, whether it did or didn't make sense. Yes, Resident Evil Village, I am talking about you. What in the Jill sandwiched hell is the Darth Maul lightsaber doing in this game, much less as a paid DLC? I get that you're quirky with tofu modes and stuff, but surely this is a bridge too far. It's not even a real lightsaber. If I'm paying you money for an upgrade in a single player game, I expect the difficulty curve to be broken like I'm Bane. Don't make a lightsaber just another melee weapon, let alone lock it behind a paywall. But while I failed to find any examples that treated the lightsabers with the same reverence Lucas did in the original trilogy, outside of Star Wars games themselves, there are certainly plenty of games that do clever and unique things with the concept of a laser sword. Namely, No More Heroes, which treats its lightsaber in almost the exact opposite way the original trilogy did. Where the originals treated their blades with an immense respect, no More Heroes has you jerk off your sword to make it hard again. I can't pretend that the vulgarity of these circumstances isn't deeply hilarious to me. Travis is the total opposite of any force wielder, and Suda 5-1's irreverent and crass tone becomes even more hysterical when you think of the media that inspired its iconic weapon. Though maybe that's not so true for the time. The comic book anti-hero aesthetic of No More Heroes was always defined by Deadpool since his introduction, so I guess it's pretty accurate in that sense. And as for Star Wars, its name was in the toilet after its original creator permanently scarred his legacy with three of the most horribly directed, overacted CGI slot fest parodies in history, so mocking Star Wars was probably what the franchise needed while it sat in a corner and thought about what it had done. The Crucible from Doom Eternal is an example of a laser sword getting more respect from its wielder, but its purpose and use are much less holy. The Crucible is a late game weapon used for the butchering of Hell's armies. It's meant to be the ultimate power fantasy for the Slayer, to bring brutal retribution to the souls of the damned. Not to mention the over the top gore and how Doom is one of the few remaining franchises to glorify violence, and it seems obvious that the Crucible's inclusion is nothing more than a way of putting a lightsaber into Doom and letting the player violate their foes in whatever gruesome way they can imagine. I suppose it's certainly treating the weapon with respect, it's just that said weapon wasn't designed to be respected, it was made to be feared. But let's finally discuss the most iconic laser sword outside of the Star Wars universe, the energy sword from Halo. The visual design of these weapons are gorgeous. I love the wide curve that end in a vibrant butterfly-like point. They look like such ceremonial pieces of alien artistry that I'm simply mesmerized by them. In my eyes, the Sangheili are the true video game equivalent of the Jedi, a deeply wise and spiritual people who wish for peace but are still fierce warriors on the battlefield. While energy swords are still mass-produced, which diminishes their impact when they appear, Having an elite wield one against you is still an awesome moment, 
as this warrior is brave enough to fight you with his traditional armaments. The Sangheili have a great honour for their blades, using it as a symbol of their pride and fighting spirit. While Halo is still a pretty hectic shooter, the blades never come across as a tool for cool. I mean, they are ridiculously cool, but given their unique standing amongst the Halo arsenal and relative rarity across the campaigns, and energy swords always stand out as a supreme design choice that's given Halo yet another piece of iconic iconography. It almost feels gross to wield one as chief, as you're holding the honour of a warrior you've just slain, and you're using his most prized possession to slaughter his comrades. It really makes you feel a sense of tragedy for the elites, as they truly believed that the prophets would guide them on the great journey, and the once proud race was reduced to minions for a false trio of gods. Halo is a franchise that treated itself with respect once upon a time before it succumbed to the rot of life's service, and the energy swords are a perfect encapsulation of how the series venerated such a high caliber of respect from fans. I'll be back in two days. In the meantime, here's a video about why grunts are the heart of Halo.